Hi, hello, welcome, welcome back. Um, I'm so glad you're here. I am so glad to be here with you. Before we start, make sure you have all your materials. They're the same materials we've been using every day. You'll need some paper, a pencil or a pen, and most importantly, your turn and talk partner, the person you're gonna share your thinking with. Remember, a turn and talk partner can be anyone. You can turn and talk to a family member. You can share your thinking with a friend or a pet, or you can talk to um, my friend, Russell Wilson. Tell him everything you're learning. Ask him what he's wondering about. Think about what he would say and what he would wanna know. Because the most important part is that you're doing the thinking and you're, you're sharing it with someone and maybe you're hearing what someone else's point of view is as well. This week, we have been using I wonder statements to help us think about text. Thinking about I wonder statements has prepared you to learn a strategy that good readers use to make sense of text, questioning. Questioning involves asking questions to help pay close attention to what you're reading and then looking for the answers as you read. Which I wonder statement are you still curious about? How can you restate that I wonder statement as a question? I've been wondering and I wonder how humans are affecting coral reefs. So as a question, I would say, how are humans affecting coral reefs? How is a word commonly used to begin questions? There are lots of words that you can use to begin questions. Some of the most famous ones or some of the ones that might come to your mind first are who, what, where, when, why, is, if, can. What other words can you think of that can begin questions? So now I have my question mark at the end because I am writing these as questions instead of I wonder statements. So how is a word that can begin a question? But there are many words that can begin questions. And here's a list of a bunch of words that you could use to turn a statement into a question. Words like who, what, when, where, why. What other words can begin questions? As you are wondering, feel free to use one of the words you came up with that I don't have on my list. Today I'm gonna read the last section of our Coral Reef book and I'm gonna stop to give us a chance to think about what we're learning and the questions that we have as we read. In many places around the world, coral reefs are threatened by water pollution, oil spills, and pesticides. They can be contaminated by construction along coasts, logging and farming along coastal rivers, and cutting down seagrasses and mangrove trees near the shore. Contaminated means polluted or made dirty. They can be contaminated by construction along coasts, logging and farming along coastal rivers, and cutting down seagrasses and mangrove trees near the shore. Another threat to coral reefs is a steady increase in average temperatures around the earth called climate change or global warming. Most scientists think that the warming is caused by the greenhouse effect, an increase of carbon dioxide and other heat trapping gases in our atmosphere. This causes ocean temperatures to rise and as a result, some coral reefs are dying. Dying coral reefs are white or appear bleached.
What have you learned so far about how humans are affecting coral reefs? What questions have been discussed in our reading so far? Turn to your partner. I asked the question, how are people affecting coral reefs? And in the text, it said that when we pollute the water, it harms the coral. It also said that global warming is uh, warming the water, and which is killing some of the reefs and the animals that live in the reefs. So I was able to find an answer to some of my questions as I was reading. What other questions could we ask at this point? Turn to your partner. I'm wondering, or my questions are, are we damaging the reefs in other ways? And how will it affect us if we keep hurting the reefs? So I'm gonna add those to my list of questions. And you'll notice I used some different questions or different words that begin questions this time. So I've used how, I used are, that's another one that can be used to start a question. And I said in what ways. Those are words that signal that we're asking a question. Coral reefs are sometimes injured or destroyed when people mine the coral for building materials or break it to sell as souvenirs and jewelry. Sometimes tourists resort, tourist resorts build on reefs or empty sewage directly into the reefs surrounding waters. Dangerous fishing practices such as fishing by using explosives also harm, harms reefs. Millions of people depend upon coral reefs for their livelihoods. Small island countries with coral reefs rely on them to attract sightseers, scuba divers, snorkelers, and other tourists. They are an important source of food for the people who live nearby. Reefs in shore areas are shields from pounding waves, storm surges, and tsunamis. Coral reefs are not just beautiful places to see and explore. Several important medical drugs for cancer research have been developed from chemicals found there. People boast about building towering skyscrapers that compete for the title of being the biggest on earth, but tiny animals can build coral reefs that are thousands of times larger than even the tallest skyscraper. No environment in nature is more colorful than a coral reef, and it is second only to a rainforest in the huge numbers of plants and animals that live there. Coral reefs may be out of our sight beneath the waves, but the beautiful images of coral will always be out of this world. What is one thing you learned from our reading today? 
Today, I learned that coral reefs are in danger because of pollution and global warming. I'm wondering, or a question that I have is, what can we do to help stop that from happening? You might have noticed, too, that not all of our questions were discussed in the book, and that's okay. That happens sometimes. If I'm still feeling really curious about it, I can find another text about coral reefs, and I can continue to wonder and search and try to find answers to my questions and keep those questions in mind while I read. So I want to make sure that you remember that Questioning can be especially useful when we're reading expository texts, like my book about coral reefs, which are full of information, and it can be hard to understand or remember all of that. I encourage you to look for opportunities to ask questions while you're reading independently over the next few weeks. It's time for IDR. Go ahead and take out your expository nonfiction book that you're going to read today. I'm going to continue to read my Mount Everest book. I'm feeling super curious about what life is like up on the mountain. I hope to learn about what it's like to be up there. Um, before I get started, I'm going to think about questions that I, specific questions that I want to find the answer to, things that I'm curious about. Then while I read, I want to be looking for the answers to those questions and also allowing my mind to become curious about new questions. I'm going to be reading and noticing and questioning all at the same time. So I'm going to show you how I do that um, in this book. I've been really curious about, so I learned the other day as I was reading this book that you can't, of course, climb Mount Everest in just one day. So then I was like, well, where do they stay? Where do they sleep when they're climbing Mount Everest? There aren't, I don't think there are hotels. Um, and so I'm curious to know how they live during the climb. And I am going to be reading to find out an answer to my question. So this section is called Home Away From Home. Mount Everest's severe cold, high winds, and heavy snowfall make the climb possible only during a few weeks in the spring and late summer. During those times, as many as several hundred climbers, guides, doctors, Sherpas, cooks, and others live in base camp, a tent city at the foot of the mountain. Waiting here for your chance to climb the mountain helps your body acclimate I know acclimate means get used to, um, the lack of oxygen in the air. And there's a picture. So in that section of the book, I was able to answer a little bit of my question. I know that when they're getting ready to climb Mount Everest, they stay at base camp. I found that answer. But it didn't completely answer my question because it didn't talk yet about where they stay as they're climbing. So I'm going to continue to read and look to see if I learn about how they live as they're climbing up the mountain. I'm also curious about what they eat as they're going up. So I'm going to continue to read to find the answers to those questions. Today, before you start reading, start thinking and wondering about your topic. What are you hoping to learn about your topic? And then as you're reading, make sure that you are reading to find answers to those questions. Also notice which questions don't get answered and think about how you might find answers to those burning questions you're still interested in. As you're reading today, you could be reading a nonfiction book if you have one. But remember, we have other sources to find non expository nonfiction books for you. You could be reading on one of the um, apps that we have on our student resources as well. Thank you so much for joining me this week. This has been all new for me too, a little bit strange at times, but we did it together and I think we did a fantastic job and just knowing you're out there reading with me made me feel really excited and it felt me better about doing this new thing. Keep reading and keep wondering and keep learning and come back next time for more strategies that'll help you be a great reader. Bye-bye, happy reading.